Mike Wardinsky here, and today I'm going to be talking about the newest features in Lightroom Classic version 13.3. Adobe added two pretty large updates, as well as some smaller support updates and some bug fixes as well. Now let's dive in. The biggest change to Lightroom is this icon right here. In previous versions, it used to be a Band-Aid or the Healing Brush. Now it is an eraser or the remove tool. But that's not all that changed. If I go ahead and click here, you'll notice that the menu is completely different. The, the healing brush is no longer the default tool, and instead it's set to the remove tool. In past versions, the remove tool was the most powerful way to remove things. But now we have the option to choose generative AI. And this generative AI feature is essentially the same engine that Photoshop uses for generative fill. So this is going to allow you to remove things much easier in Lightroom and perhaps even eliminating the need for you to hop over to Photoshop for object removal. Now let's do a little comparison between the classic remove tool and the generative AI. So we'll start off using the classic remove. I'll go ahead and click here and I'll increase my brush size just a little bit. I'll leave my opacity at 100%. Typically you wanna leave it there if you're trying to remove something. I'm just gonna draw along this weed and Lightroom will analyze the image and then we'll zoom in to see how it did. And you can see, not very good. So let me go ahead and click on the remove tool icon and hit delete. And now I'm gonna check generative AI and I'll zoom back out to 100% and draw across the same weed. There we go. And this time we see a mask so we can refine the mask if we wanted to. I could go to subtract and kind of paint this in a little bit if I wanted to. Or if say I wanted to add some, I could come in here and I could add a little bit if I wanted to. But I think this is looking good, so we're gonna hit apply. And now Lightroom is going to analyze the photo and this is gonna take a couple of seconds for it to do. And now if we zoom in here, you can see Lightroom did a lot better job than it did when just using the remove tool. We also have three different variations we can go through. So we have our variation number one, here's number two, and number three. And if we don't like any of these, we could always go to refresh. Um, I think one was looking pretty good. So we'll just go ahead and leave it there for now. And there's one more thing I wanna point out, and that is object aware. If we check this and then go ahead and brush again onto our image, you'll see that the mask is automatically refined along the object that we're trying to select. Now, honestly, I don't think this is really gonna make a huge difference in most cases. So I would probably end up err on the side of leaving this off, but if you want to, you can go ahead and leave it checked and then just as you would before, hit apply. Now the last part of this dialog box is visualize spots. This is nothing new, but just so you know, you might wanna turn generative AI off just so it's not analyzing every single time and then just use the regular remove tool or heel brush. I can shrink this down and go ahead and click in my sky and get rid of those. And then when I'm done, I can hit apply and turn visualize off and you can see where I did my removals. This next update is pretty big news for Sony shooters since previous versions of Lightroom did not support tethered capture. The newest version of Lightroom supports tethered capture for all of the models listed on the screen and many more. In addition to Sony getting a little bit of an upgrade, so did Canon shooters. Now it's important to note that Sony cameras need to be in PC remote mode for USB tethering. And I'll leave a link for instructions how to do that in the description of this video. Another feature in Lightroom 13.3 is the ability to sort by export status. For example, if I come over to this icon and click it, it shows me any photo that has been exported from the catalog. If I click it again, we go back to our default view and the icon on the right is any photo that has not been exported. Again, click it again, and we're back to our default with no filters. This information can also be found in the library filter. If you don't see this, hit the backslash key, and that will hide and show the, the filter bar. And if I come up to metadata, and I'm just gonna go over here to file type, and then I'm gonna come down to exported files, and you can see I can choose between exported and not exported. If I'd like to change the status of an exported file, I can go ahead and click exported files and I'll just click on this first one and I will control click on a Mac, right click on a PC and choose reset export status. And now you can see Lightroom's telling me that the status will be reset for one photo. Do you wanna continue and we'll hit okay. 
And you can see then that photo disappeared from this filter. And if I want to see all the photos again, I can again just click all and here we go. Up next, we have an update for Mac users using the M chips. Adobe now allows Mac users to utilize the neural engine for AI noise reduction. In theory, this is going to speed up the AI noise reduction process. I wasn't able to do a comparison before recording this video, so please let me know in the comments if you find that the new version of Lightroom speeds up your AI denoise workflow when using an Apple M chip. Okay, we've got one more big update to go, but before we get there, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and go to naturemike.com for some great infield workshops, articles, and private post-processing lessons. Okay, the final big addition to Lightroom 13.3 is in the Lens Blur tab. If I open this up, you can see we've got a few new options. I'm gonna hit Apply to analyze the image. Um, and underneath Apply, we have a blur amount. That's just the amount of the effect. That hasn't changed at all. Underneath Blur Amount, we have Bokeh. I'm not gonna adjust these right now because I have a different image that will do a better job of demonstrating these new features. And then we have focus range, not a lot of difference here, except Adobe added the words near and far to let you know which part of the image is near and which part is far. So if I move this back here, the background's in focus. If I move it into the front, the foreground is in focus. We also have a couple new icons up here. This will focus on the subject, or I can choose this icon and that allows me to draw a box around the subject. Underneath focus range, we have visual depth. No real changes here. This just allows you to visualize the depth with colors. That way you can see where your focus range is and then you can move the box around if needed. One of the biggest new additions to this tab is the brush refinement. If I go ahead and zoom in here, you'll see that this antler is a little bit blurred and it doesn't look natural. So what we can do is come over to the focus button, make sure our mount is set to 100 and I'm gonna just go ahead and brush along the antler until that blur goes away. And there we go. Now, one thing you need to be careful with this is, if I zoom in here, I'll go into about 400%. You can see I'm starting to brush in detail. The background is so far blurred out that I'm actually brushing in noise and it doesn't look natural. So you gotta be careful about that. I'm gonna go ahead and do select a little bit more up here. And now I'm gonna to switch to blur, the blur brush. I'll come back in here and I'll brush the blur in. And obviously you can see it's gonna take a bit of refinement. So maybe I'll take the feather down and I'll go back to focus. And I'm just gonna brush this in along the edge and see if that does any, any better of a job. Okay, so that's pretty good. I mean, I could probably refine this a little bit better, but for, for what this is, this, this works. I just wanna show you the example here. And again, I get another little piece right here, brush that in, and there we go. And lastly, at the bottom we have auto mask, and I typically leave that check. That's the software doing its best guess to figure out what you're trying to do with the brush. For example, when I was trying to brush this antler, it should do a good job of recognizing the antler between the background, but as you just saw, it's definitely far from perfect. But as this tool evolves, hopefully this option will get better and better as time goes on. Okay, so now we've got a great image to demonstrate the bokeh feature in Lightroom 13.3. The first thing we need to do is apply the lens blur and then the bokeh are lit up. And these icons are a little bit confusing, but the thing to pay attention to is just the shape of the circle in the background just know that that's what is gonna happen to the bokeh. So to make that make a little more sense, I'm gonna zoom into 100%. I'm gonna change our focus range because I think it needs to be into the foreground a little bit more just so you can really see what's happening. And you can see the by default, we get just a nice circle. But if I click on this one, we get a hollow circle. Moving along, we have a sort of polygonal and then a circle with a almost like a double ring, and then lastly, sort of a misshapen circle. Underneath the bokeh options, we have a boost slider, but honestly, I don't see much of a difference in either direction, so I would just leave that alone for now. Okay, well, that's the bulk of the Lightroom 13.3 updates. Of course, Adobe always does a bunch of bug fixes, and I'll go ahead and paste those in the description of this video. And let me know what updates you'd like to see in Lightroom in the future. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next video.